morning. My name is Claire and I am the assistant curate here at St. James Cathedral in Toronto. This morning we will be saying morning prayer out of the Book of Alternative Services, which begins um, on page 47. It's the green book. So let's pray. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. We'll say antiphon number three at the bottom of page 47, and then we'll say the Venite together and then repeat the antiphon. The Lord is our refuge and strength. O come, let us worship. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord is our refuge and strength. O oh, come, let us worship. The psalms appointed for this morning are Psalms 61 and 62, which begin on page 781 of the BAS. Hear my cry, O God, and listen to my prayer. I call upon you from the ends of the earth with heaviness in my heart. Set me upon the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge a strong tower against the enemy. I will dwell in your house forever. I will take refuge under the cover of your wings. For you, O Lord, have heard my vows. You have granted me the heritage of those who fear your name. Add length of days to the king's life. Let his years extend over many generations. Let him sit enthroned before God forever. Bid love and faithfulness watch over him. So will I always sing the praise of your name, and day by day I will fulfill my vows. Psalm 62. For God alone my soul in silence waits. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will you assail me to crush me, all of you together, as if you were a leaning fence, a toppling wall? They seek only to bring me down from my place of honor. Lies are their chief delight. They bless with their lips, but in their hearts they curse. For God alone my soul in silence waits. Truly my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales they are lighter than a breath, all of them together. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it, that power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord, for you repay everyone according to his deeds. Lord God, in a threatening world, we look to you as our rock of hope. Hear us as we pour out our hearts to you and give us your grace and protection through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first reading 
is found in the second book of Samuel, chapter 3, beginning at the sixth verse. While there was a war between the house of Saul and the house of David, Abner was making himself strong in the house of Saul. Now, Saul had a concubine whose name was Rizpah, daughter of Aya. And Ishbael said to Abner, Why have you gone in to my father's concubine? The words of Ishbael made Abner very angry. He said, Am I a dog's head for Judah? Today I keep showing loyalty to the house of your father Saul, to his brothers, and to his friends, and have not given you into the hand of David. And yet you charge me now with a crime concerning this woman. So may God do to Abner, and so may he add to it. For just what the Lord has sworn to David, that will I accomplish for him, to transfer the kingdom from the house of Saul and set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah, from Dan to Beersheba. And Ishbael could not answer Abner another word because he feared him. Abner sent messengers, messengers to David at Hebron, saying, To whom does the land belong? Make your covenant with me, and I will give you my support to bring all Israel over to you. He said, Good, I will make a covenant with you. But one thing I require of you. You shall never appear in my presence unless you bring Saul's daughter Michal when you come to see me. Then David sent messengers to Saul's son, Ishbael, saying, Give me my wife, Michal, to whom I became engaged at the price of 100 foreskins of the Philistines. Ishbael sent and took her from her husband, Paltiel, the son of Laish. But her husband went with her, weeping as he walked behind her all the way to Bahurim. Then Abner said to him, Go back home. So he went back. Abner sent word to the elders of Israel, saying, For some time past you have been seeking David as king over you. Now then, bring it about. For the Lord has promised David, Through my servant David I will save my people Israel from the hand of the Philistines and from all their enemies. Abner also spoke directly to the Benjaminites. Then Abner went to tell David at Hebron that all that Israel and the whole house of Benjamin were ready to do. When Abner came with 20 men to David at Hebron, David made a feast for Abner and the men who were with him. Abner said to David, let me go and rally all Israel to my Lord, the king, in order that they may make a covenant with you and that you may reign over all that your heart desires. So David dismissed Abner and he went away in peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In response, let's say Canticle 6, which is found on page 78, it's, um, a passage where a lot of sin is on display that we just read, and so this seems a fitting response. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord, and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. The second lesson is from the book of Acts, chapter 16, verse 6 to 15. They went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, 
having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. When they had come opposite Mysia, they attempted to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So passing by Mysia, Mysia, they went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis and from there to Philippi, which is the leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In response to the readings, let's affirm the faith that we have. by saying together the Hear, O Israel, which is found on page 53. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. As we sit or lie or stand in God's presence, let us pray to the Lord saying, Lord, have mercy. For the whole people of God, that each one may be a true and faithful servant of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those drawing near to the light of faith, that the Lord will bring them to true knowledge of himself. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our families and friends, that the Lord will give them joy and satisfaction in all that they do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are lonely, sick, hungry, persecuted or ignored, that the Lord will comfort and sustain them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our country, that the Lord will help us to contribute to its true growth and well-being. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the whole human family, that we may live together in justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We remember today, especially all those that are in our own circles, our community at St. James, and those who are in our own personal communities and families um, who are sick or suffering. I invite you to name those names. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O 
God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and grant us peace. Amen. Go in peace. <laughs>